What's good, peeps? Episode 4 of the Indefatigable Artist Podcast is out now. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. And as always, go further at Bleece.com. All the links can also be found at the Bleece Audio Hub on Bleece.com. Check it out. Sign up to the free newsletter every week. Sending something out. Plus um, exclusive offers for uh, our apparel. And uh, be the first to know about events. Virtual and IRL events. Episode 4. What's it all for? I'll be answering these three questions. When your time is up on this planet, what will you leave behind? Where's this podcast going? And what's it all for? What is good, peeps? Welcome to an indefatigable artist. Just wake and be. I am your host, Bleece. Just a human being a multimedia artist in the 21st century. Just a friendly reminder that it's free to support. A like, comment, or a share goes a long way. You can always check out more at Bleece.com and sign up to the free newsletter. Softcover novels, audiobooks, and ebooks are available there as well. Thank you. Episode 4. What's it all for? What is an indefatigable artist? Why am I suitable to be the host what the fuck have i done what is it all for creating no matter what saying i woke up today and it's up to me to figure out why it's saying i know that i'm going to die but before i do I am going to leave something behind. Something that will hopefully help others with this fickle, tormenting gift of life along their indefatigable journey. A helpful stepping stone to keep them out of the mud. We have to keep going. What other choice do we have? We always have the right to choose. Fuck that. I have to do this. I have to do that. Take some self-responsibility for your space and time within this universe. Choose what is best for you. You. The only one who will be there when it's all said and done. You. The only one who will be laying in that coffin. What matters is the effect you had on others. That's the only valuable currency there is in this universe. The effect I choose to have is creating art. So back to the question, what is an indefatigable artist? And for the record, I know I pronounce indefatigable differently i actually hate the pronunciation google gives for it i prefer my way and if you don't like it too bad this is my podcast kidding but uh i do choose to say it this way by definition indefatigable adjective of a person or their efforts Persisting tirelessly. Persisting tirelessly. The definition for me brings me to the cover art of my first novel, Bleece. It was a painting I created after the hard drive crashed on my computer. Having been the second time in my life that this uh, unfortunate event occurred, I had most of my work backed up. Unfortunately, I, at the time, um, 
was not using a cloud service to keep the computer backed up seamlessly as I do now. So I did lose a couple of weeks of work, but uh, still was not as bad as the first time I had a computer crash on me. The first time I had a hard drive crash on me was by far the worst which is where I went mentally when it happened again to that first time. That first time I lost everything I was working on. And to give you some context of what I mean by everything, I had uh, taken the summer off school and mostly work. Um, I still was working a few days a week uh, on the weekends, but it was not a double shift. It was a single shift that, that summer. Um, so I really stepped back, um, away from everything to just write. That's all I did that summer. Like I said, I continued working just two or three days a week doing valet, but the rest of the time I was in that one bedroom apartment in Fort Lauderdale off Broward Boulevard writing. And by the end of that summer, I think it was uh, summer 2012, I had written over a thousand pages, a thousand pages. I had basically both of the novels written out, a bunch of other poetry, dream writing, short stories, the beginnings of other novels. All I did was write that summer. And the hard drive crashed it was the week before uh summer was going to end and i was going back to school um just crash the hard drive stopped spinning i took it to best buy to have the geek squad look at it they couldn't save it i went to another place i spent around 800 dollars that was non-refundable whether they got the information or not to try and salvage it nothing could be done. <laughs> I was absolutely devastated. I couldn't even, I couldn't move. I didn't eat for a few days. I just stayed in bed and slept. It felt like I had fucking died with nothing to leave behind. It was like I, I would be gone and forgotten. My energy would be converted into what? Transformed into what? I couldn't answer that question. So without a computer, I took out my art box and started painting. I painted and painted and painted just random things. Um, a lot of it didn't make much sense, uh, but it was very soothing. Some of the pieces are what I imagined cave painting was like. Something primal within. Painting with my fingers. It was something innate. Something I think we all have in our soul that wants to be unleashed. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Only converted from one form to another. The first law of thermodynamics. Or look at my fellow pie baby, Albert Einstein's E equals MC squared. Energy and mass are interchangeable. They are different forms of the same thing. These paintings were a release for me. I let out all of my frustration. A thousand pages of writing gone forever. <sighs> Took a couple days to even eat. I ordered some uh, Chinese food delivered. Uh, it was the only thing I ate that week. <laughs> uh, I couldn't speak to anyone. I couldn't text anyone. I couldn't talk to anyone on the phone. I was completely isolated and alone. Uh, very, very dark place. Um, and my bedroom was really dark then because I worked at night and I had this night schedule that I continued even on days that I wasn't working. I tried to take um, as late of classes as I possibly could. 
uh, late afternoon classes. Um, I really was sleeping for, I would, you know, wake up. It was pretty normal for me to wake up at 2 PM, 3 PM <laughs> during that time. Um, if I did sleep, uh, at all, um, yeah, if I did sleep, but, uh, after a week of being in that state, it was like, I say seven days, eight days. Um, it may have gone up to like nine days. Uh, it really was a blur for me. Um, yeah, I didn't give up. I didn't care about anything. Um, I didn't even talk to work or anything. I just was gone, like just gone. Um, and, uh, the first place I did go to was Best Buy to purchase a computer. Um, everything I had saved up was thrown at that. I used funds from uh, school to help pay for it. C's get you degrees. A's get you paid in college. Sign up. This is for uh, all the kids out there going into college. If you're listening to this, sign up for all the scholarships and grants you possibly can. You would be amazed at how much money doesn't get claimed every semester at your college or university. I was amazed when I went there. I'm like, all of this doesn't get claimed. I mean, all it takes is literally you just filling out the application and you get you get it because no one else is trying to claim it. Now, this isn't the case for all scholarships and grants there are a lot of ones that are highly competitive uh sign up for those too you never know but i'm just saying there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that just takes you filling out the application which i found just amazing like I, I was truly amazed um the first time i uh went back to college and realized that and i just spent days just filling out all of these applications and stuff to different scholarships and grants. Uh, it was pretty awesome. Um, so definitely recommend that. So I get that computer and now years later, so that first crash happened, at, you know, 2012, I think 2012 or 2013. I, I'm kind of confused. I think I definitely, yeah. Or 2011, 2012, I'm pretty sure it was 2012. Um, so years later, let's say about five years. So now we're at 2017, somewhere around there. This next computer crashes. I did learn my lesson. You know, we all make mistakes, but it's best to learn from that mistake and only make it once. Only get burned once. And we all get burned. We all make mistakes. I have made my fair share. Um, the first step is just admitting admitting you fucked up um learn from it as all the different angles you can learn from that mistake so i did have a backup hard drive i kept it backed up um the problem this next time so as you overcome obstacles you'll come across new obstacles they're not going to be the same as before they're always going to be slightly different um it's another learning experience this crash it was more about impeding my ability to get projects i was working on done i was so close to getting things done for the website different designs animations videos all of it had to be put on hold until I could get the computer fixed or buy a new one. The other obstacle this time, I didn't have the funds to do either. Uh, I was really in a tough spot. Uh, was in the middle of moving. Um, you know, I got to save up down payment, all that stuff. Um, yeah, we uh, moved into uh, another apartment at the time. And with uh, with colorful, colorful designs, we were going from one apartment to the next, had to throw down down payment, all that stuff, you know, how it goes. Um, so I had to wait. I had to wait. I was in a really tough spot. I had to just say, F it, wait. 
got to the new apartment, new computer. Life was golden after that. But during that time, it was very frustrating. Very stressful to move in and of itself. And then it's also stressful to try to get all these projects done in what you thought would be done before the move. So I turned back to my little art box that I have filled with different colored pens, crayons, markers, paints, different papers, etc. And I just started splattering paint over pieces of paper, carpet, whatever. I was just splattering paint. I got it everywhere. I was throwing paint and unleashing that frustration in a creative way. I never intended for that splattered paint to be seen or used by anything. It was just the act of doing it, of getting that frustration out. And it's something I do with writing as well. Like I get a lot of frustration out in in writing, a lot of anxiety, depression. And that's why I'm a multimedia artist because there's different ways to, to let out that frustration. And you feel that in these times when you go from writing and getting it out there to another medium like painting or even graphic design or video animation, whatever it is, harnessing that, that energy and transforming it in a different way, getting that um, hand eye coordination, getting those waves down in your brain and those pathways, you know, instead of that frustration coming. And when I was in high school, that frustration would come to me And my outlet at that time, my brain path was to punch, it was to punch something, punch a a wall, punch a door, uh, a car, a person, (laughs) anything. Um, And you have to develop a different way of going from that kind of anger because frustrations are going to always be there they're incessant and just when you learn to overcome one frustration there's another different one behind it that's going to come and you know do i still struggle with it yes um we all have our struggles and i'm going to get into that in a minute about where i turn to to help with that but right now it's about this painting and looking back it's about this painting throwing paint down on paper is a hell of a lot better than punching holes in the wall that much I can tell you it doesn't hurt as much and doesn't shock the living hell out of your family which is always a good thing and now looking back I'm actually grateful for those hard moments. With this podcast, with this project I'm doing now, looking back at myself as a character, looking back at Ryan as a character, there was a lot of character development that happened in those moments. What those moments did most was instill in me the desire to create, to leave something behind. They were a reminder that it could be all gone today. And that everlasting, that ever looming question for all creatives, what did you leave behind? And in these moments, I questioned if everything I ever wrote or created was destroyed, what else would there be to remember me by? My energy? My presence? What effect did I have on those around me? 
Was it positive? What could I do better to have a more positive impact? Those moments required of me to go further. It was those moments that hardened my resolve, that made me appreciate what indefatigable means, persisting tirelessly, creating no matter what. It's saying, I woke up today with that simple act. I am already more resilient than the day before. If I choose to see it. What's it all for? What is this podcast about? Creating no matter what. It's about self-expression. It's about releasing frustration. It's about alleviating depression for those carrying the weight of yesterday. It's about alleviating anxiety for those fearing the worry of tomorrow. It's about alleviating presence for those not enjoying the whimsicality of today. We have to keep going. What other choice do we have? We always have the right to choose. Again, fuck that. I have to do this. I have to do that. When people say they have to do something, it's funny to analyze what they bring up. So much of it made up by other human beings. Most of those human beings aren't even alive today. Yet their written words still hold sway over millions, if not billions of people. A few simple words can have an everlasting effect. Now I'm going to talk on a universal level here. And I know the knee-jerk reaction is to dismiss what I'm saying here. Negating a different perspective instills the illusion even more. In the Blissful Journey series, I have cities inside of domes. There's a number of reasons for this. There's a practicality of these cities being on a free-floating planet that is heavily polluted. But there is also the allegorical level the illusory dome that I see when visiting different cities. How most of the time spent awake for people is living in an illusion. They live inside the creation of others, constantly distracted, ever more so now than ever before. What is scrolling on a social media platform? It's spending time in someone else's creation. Someone else's imagination. Now it's more time spent inside a computerized algorithm. In the novels, the consumptions, creaticisms, miserians, and others also travel in these creature mover tubes. They constrict where they can go. They're led to just the store to go shopping, to spend their own skin, as that is the currency. All while distracted by their eye pokes, which have several needles penetrating their eyes and temples, feeding off the energy of their attention. What I love about this new James Webb satellite and the images is that it finally drew some meaningful discourse out of people. It made people zoom out of their busy life. Yes, we all know the universe is a vast place. Just too much to think about. Hurts our brains to think about. 
Plus, who has time to think about it? Oh, you're one of those guys who likes to talk about outer space and aliens. In this vast universe, how could we ever think we are the only planet with life on it, let alone the only planet with conscious life? And to tie it back to my novels again, I really didn't want to label my novels as science fiction as I didn't want them to be immediately dismissed by anyone. I feel there's a large percentage of readers or moviegoers who aren't into it. And my future goal with the Bleece movies is to take animated films to that level of being taken serious, similar to what we saw with the original Beauty and the Beast animation, the first animated film to be nominated for Best Picture. But Bleece is about bringing a level of harshness to animation. It's supposed to be shocking, just as reading it is supposed to be jarring. That is how we shake up the question of what is normal. Surpass normality. Living in our own universe, in a foreign being's eye, we may not be fit. It's okay to be bewildered. Personally, I think so many adults are made to feel vulnerable when they come across ideas, concepts that they don't understand, so they use defense mechanisms like belittling to make their ego feel better, belittling the youth, telling them to be quiet, shut up. I say we need to listen to the youth more. I want to hear more about their wonder of how they see themselves in this space and time versus being told their role forced upon them by environmental factors. Let them be limitless for as long as they can. See where their mind wanders. To back this up, I'd like to point out the paperclip experiment. If you don't know about it, definitely Google it. Paperclip experiment. In 1968, George Land and Beth Jarman conducted an experiment with children. They originally designed it for testing potential NASA engineers and scientists on how innovative they were. The researchers asked 1,600 five-year-old children how many uses they could come up with for paper clips. Then they retested those children at ages 10 and 15. And they tested a group of adults. The results were shocking. The results were shocking when we compare them to common beliefs about the intelligence of children versus adults. The proportion of people who scored at the genius level on this test were as follows. Five-year-olds, 98% were at genius level. Five-year-olds, 98% of them scored a genius level. By the time they turned 10 years old, doubled in age, that number went from 98% down to 30%. Think about that. It goes from 98% genius level at five years old of this paperclip experiment down to 30. And when they turn 15, it goes from 98 to 12. Only 12%. Of those same kids scored at a genius level. Adults. Adults scored 2. 2%. Only 2% of adults scored at a genius level. Compare that to 5 year olds who scored 98%. Let their minds wander. Who are adults to belittle 
or dismiss any voice given those numbers. New perspective to our living environment should be welcomed and listened to respectfully. Question everything. Fuck that. This is the way it is. This is the way it's always been. Do it because it's what our grandparents did. Fuck that. New perspectives should be welcomed and listen to. Go further. Zoom out. Look how insignificant not only humans are, but our entire fucking planet, our entire solar system, just one of trillions, trillions of galaxies, trillions from what we can actually see. That's just from what we have seen. The James Webb image is a speck of sand held at an arm's length. It's minuscule what we have seen. Minuscule. Just appreciate. Have, have as Einstein said, a veneration, a deep veneration for the universe and what it holds. Think about how much is left unseen. How many have lived and died on one planet? On one planet? You, you lived and died on one planet. We may be one of the last generations alive to say that. That we lived and died on one planet. We've gone to the moon. That's it. What have we done in the last 50 years? We're taking pictures finally. How much is left unseen? Stop belittling. Who, who are these adults to belittle anyone given this? Have some respect. I will say humans are a nomadic species. We're meant to travel. We've traveled all over this one singular planet. We're one of a few species to do that. And now we're taking that deep innate need to travel to other planets. Embrace that vulnerability of not knowing what else lies out there. Embrace that. Who says the universe is to be understood by humans? It's under no obligation to be understood by us one species among how many? We've only been around for how long? It's a speck of time just to this planet, let alone the universe itself. We live a hundred if we're lucky. Some things just hurt to think about. It's why Einstein called it a spooky action at a distance. Quantum entanglement. How one atom can have an effect on another, no matter how far away it is. This brings me back again to the point of saying, we have to do something? What is your answer to that? When you say, I have to do something. No, I, when, when someone asks you to, to do something fun, no, I can't, I have to do this. What's it in reference to? We have to pay rent. We have to pay bills. We have to pay our taxes. We have to drive the speed limit. We have to put our seatbelts on. It's all a creation of another human being. They simply made it up. I'm not going to be a nihilist here or have that way of thinking or revolting against these. It's not about that. It's about seeing them as creations as creations from other human beings who are no different than you or I. We're all part of the same species occupying the same planet around the same sun in the same Milky Way galaxy. Again, zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom out a little bit. There's only three things I can think of that human beings have to do on this singular planet. Breathe, eat, and reproduce. Other than that, it's a human-made 
illusion. Think about our written laws that can be changed at will. Change that will. How? Because another human creates a new law and gets others to agree to it. How much rent do I have to pay? That's up to another human being to decide. How many bills do I have to pay? Depends on how distracted I want to be. And now what happens if I don't pay rent? What happens if I don't pay those bills? What happens if I don't drive the speed limit? What happens if I don't put my seatbelt on? It's frustrating. I know. I get it. My point here is to tell you to take time for yourself. You have time for yourself. You just have to make it. You have to make time for yourself. Now that I have listed a bunch of shared frustrations, I want to do a quick exercise. This comes from Dr. Joan Rosenberg, whose teachings have really helped me with my anger and anxiety. I recommend looking her up as well as her book as it's very transformative. In her book, she talks about the seven difficult emotions. I mentioned this earlier that I would talk about it later on in the episode. So this is that. Seven difficult emotions. Anger. Frustration. Helplessness. Sadness. Embarrassment, shame, and vulnerability that all humans struggle with to a certain degree. Now, if you can, if you're in a safe space, not driving down the freeway, if you are, I implore you to come back to this and really give it a try. It's really simple, but over time will have a profound effect on your daily life. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold it a couple seconds. Breathe out through your mouth while saying the words anger and frustration. Another deep breath through the nose. Hold it in. Breathe out through your mouth while saying the words helplessness and sadness. <sighs> now the last final deep breath in through the nose. Hold it. Hold it as long as you can this time. Then let it out. <sighs> while saying the words embarrassment, shame, vulnerability. Let those words out of your system. Get those words off your shoulders. They aren't your burdens to bear, not your weight to carry. Let it out. Feel how you feel, not how you think others want you to feel. Drop the facade. Put down the variety of masks we feel we have to wear every single day. Wear a mask around family. Wear a mask at work, at the gym, walking down the street, around our friends, our posts online. What are all these different masks? Why are they so heavy? So heavy, we don't even realize that we're carrying them around with us every waking moment. We are human beings, not human doings. Wake and be. That is all you have to do is be. Be exactly who you are. You are right where you need to be, whether you like where you're at or not. 
you are still here, right here, right now. And that is all that matters. Embrace that vulnerability. Grow from it. You woke up today. With that simple act, you're already more resilient than the day before. If you choose to see it. Take a good hard look in the mirror. Know that you have done all you can to spread your energy to all you know. Not only in this moment and to those people around you in the present, but those who you have yet to meet. Future generations. Leads me back to the initial question. What's it all for? Where do I want to take this podcast? Further and beyond. I feel like we are trapped in these illusory domed cities as fantasized in Bleece and Bleece Paradox. I want to be like Breezy, who can jump into the air, break the glass ceiling, and fly over the dome to anywhere he wants to and bring any individual who is willing to go. What's it all for? What is this podcast for? It's to tell others to write down their frustrations, to get them to zoom out. We're drowned in this dome. One half to to the next. One bill to the next. One project to the next. It's incessant, never tiring, all the time, everything all at once. You keep paddling, but the water, the chemicals, the bills, the toxins, fickle friends, the illusions never end. So why not choose to go off into your own world where everything in the universe appears as it truly is? Infinite. Into the infinite. Into another dimension where the lines between dreaming and realizing are blurred. Down is up and up is sideways. Today I am learning something new in real time before your eyes. I want this podcast to be an escape for both myself and and whoever takes the time out of their day to listen. A poem from my first novel, Bleece, encapsulates this point. Why am I here? Others think and do, but I am not like you. What is it I should be? Cast out like a heathen, insecurities grow. I can't let anyone know. I can't let anyone know. Then they would really see me. Sit on my chest. Crush my heart. Make me confess. No, I can't let that happen. So I stand behind a rock that forged from my volcanic anger. Molten lava, which sludged from my mouth. I stand out here in the night, in the heat, shivering inside. Smell the rotting corpse of fear that has encrusted my soul. My consciousness has froze. I know where to go. I do not dare move. So I stand behind this rock, stare at this door. I do not dare matter. I will never open this door, one eye in the peephole, the other on my frigid soul. I refuse to let it go on its own. What's it all about? Living after we die. To quote Orby in the first novel, dying is for the weak. Dying is for anyone but me. Again, what is this podcast about? It's about alleviating depression for those carrying the weight of yesterday. It's about alleviating anxiety for those fearing the worry of tomorrow. It's about alleviating presence for those not enjoying the whimsicality of today. 
It's about going further together one step at a time. Thank you. Appreciate you listening. Be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment. A free way to pay it forward. Can always go further at blease.com and sign up to our free newsletter. Let's go further together.